okay. So, this is the 7 comma 4 Hamming code. So, where, where do the 7 and 4 come from? Uh, so, this is your message vector. Okay. This is your message vector and this has k equals 4 bits of message. Okay. So, previously in the repetition code k was 1. In this case, k is going to be 4. We are going to take 4 bits at a time and then do the encoding. Okay. And your code word which I will call c has n equals 7 bits. Okay. So, 4 bits of message gets converted into 7 bits of code word and your rate is 4 by 7 bits per symbol. Okay. So, once you convert it into a code word, everything else remains the same. So, each bit gets converted into a symbol vector and the same BPSK mapper is used, 0 goes to plus 1, 1 goes to minus 1, etc. And then noise gets added, which is Gaussian mean 0 variance sigma square. You have uh, 7 received values, R1, R2 till R7 and your decoder needs to work. It could be hard decision or soft decision and you get your C cap. Okay. So, what is this encoding? Now, what does the Hamming code work? I have shown you the encoding as a table. Okay. Remember, the encoder can be written, written down as a table. You have 4 bit messages. There are 16 different possibilities, 0, 0, 0, 0, all the way to 1, 1, 1, 1. That is what is shown in the first column here and the first column here, 16 different possibilities. Each of these 16 message vectors gets mapped into a unique code word. And what code word is that? That is given on the second column here. Okay. So, this is the code word for the 7-4 Hamming code. So, just to show you an example, 1011, if your message is 1011, you put out a code word 1011000. Okay, so, that is it. So, that is just a code. I am not giving you a long explanation for where the Hamming code comes from, but I am just defining the code for you. This is the code. One can do it. Okay. So, it has got 16 code words. Uh, it has the cyclic property, which I am just mentioning for general interest. If you take any code word, you do a cyclic shift, you get another valid code word. Okay. So, remember once again, when you look at 7 bit vectors, the total number of possibilities is 128. There are 128 7 bit word vectors. Out of that 128, these 16 code words have been selected carefully. Okay. Only 16 have been selected. They have been selected carefully and put into this, put into this Hamming code. Okay. And uh, only these 16 are shown here. Okay. So, all these properties are important. Another important property is message appears in the code word. What do we mean by message appears in the code word? If you look at the first 4 bits of the code word, what is that? In every code word, the first 4 bits of the code word agree with the message. Okay. You can see that throughout the first 4 bits of the code word equal the message. Okay. So, that is the, that is one other property. Uh, if you do an encoding like that, uh, it is called a systematic encoder. The message appears in the code word. Uh, so, these are all nice properties. In fact, there are various other interesting properties. This is an example of what is called a linear code. If you take any two code words and do a bitwise XOR of the two code words, you will get another valid code word. Okay. So, all these are nice properties, but uh, at this point, we are not interested so much in these properties. Later on, we will come back and look at it. Uh, but we are primarily interested in seeing how to build uh, encoders and decoders uh, for such a code. Okay. So, now things are a little bit more complex than the repetition case. I cannot put down uh, simple uh, intuitive uh, things and explain it to you. Uh, but nevertheless, the ideas we picked up in the repetition code will work here as well. Okay. So, how does that work? Uh, so, first is hard decision decoder. Okay. So, you can do a hard decision first. You can do a threshold at 0. Okay. And you get uh, this vector b, which is the hard decision, some hard decision vector. And then uh, one can find the code word which is closest in Hamming distance. Okay. So, so far, I have not described what Hamming distance is. So, let me describe what Hamming distance is. If you have two vectors u and v, which are both binary and length n, both are binary vectors. Okay. 
the Hamming distance between these two T h of u v okay, is defined as the number of places in which u and v differ. Okay, so, this is actually a quite a standard definition if you have not seen it this is the definition. So, you have two vectors the number of places in which u and v differ is called the Hamming distance between the two binary vectors. Okay. So, once you find the hard decision vector here okay, what you do is you find the code word find c as in the code word. Okay, you have 16 different code words and this hard decision vector can be any 7 bit vector. Okay, so, in general it would not be a code word. Okay, so, it can be any 7 bit vector and it may not be a code word. Uh, your code word is only 16 chosen things from the 128 possibilities. So, what you do is you go find that code word among your 16 possibilities which are closest in Hamming distance to uh, which is the that code word which is closest in Hamming distance to your hard decision vector. Okay. So, how will you do this? This will involve 16 different computations. You have your vector b, you find the Hamming distance with the first code word, then you find the Hamming distance with the second code word, then you find the Hamming distance with the third code word, so on. And then you find that guy which has the least Hamming distance and declare that as your c cap. Okay. So, this has uh, closest to b okay the vector b all right so so quickly i want to comment on complexity okay so here we have k equals 4 so 2 power 4 is just 16 you have 16 different code words you can do this exhaustively uh, but you see if k were to even be 100 okay 2 power 100 is a very large number okay and you can't do these kind of calculations very easily okay finding the distance uh, one code word at a time is not going to work if you have large number of code words and in real communication systems k could be like 1000, 10000 and all that. Okay. So, while this decoder is uh, nice and sort of easy to describe uh, from, uh, from a theoretical point of view, it is not going to be very useful in practice and you will have to improve upon this definitely in the complexity front. Okay. But for now, let us keep this decoder going. Uh, there are cases where this also might be useful. Okay. At least for the Hamming code, one can implement this. Okay. So, this is the hard decision decoder. So, you make hard decisions threshold at 0 individually, you give up a lot of information, but it is at least easier to handle just bits. You find Hamming distances and then find the code word which is closest in Hamming distance. Okay. So, this is one decoder. Okay. So, here is uh, an example just to illustrate how this can be complex. Okay. So, here is the same uh, system as before Hamming code. I have listed out all the code words here. And just for example, I am showing you supposing your hard decision vector is 1010101, what is going to be your c cap? Okay. You have to take this 1010101 and look at each possible code word and find the distance from each of the code words and find the code word which is closest. Okay. So, for instance, distance between 1010101 and 000, the distance will actually be uh, 4. Okay. You can keep writing it down. So, likewise, you have to find the distance and finding the distance also is not so easy, you know. And it looks like, uh, I mean, you have to count very, very carefully. For instance, if you look at 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, uh, you see 1, 2, uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, the distance goes to 5, okay. So, likewise, uh, you have to look at the various possibilities. Maybe we look at this 1, 0, 1, 0 here. Uh, this is a distance uh, 2 away, I think. Yeah. This is a distance 2 away. Uh, maybe I need to look at. Uh, so, 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 you see, it is not trivial. I mean, just to find which one is closest uh, is not uh, easy. Maybe one can look at uh, this one. Okay, for instance, this guy 1000101, this is at a distance 1 away. Okay. Okay. So, it turns out this is the closest. Okay. So, C cap became 1000101. Okay. 
So it's not trivial for me to find it just like that. So of course, if you write a computer program, it will just brute force go through everything, find the distance and do it. Uh, it's not easy. Okay. So here is another example. You might have to do a little bit of thinking and worry about how to go about this uh, before you can be sure. Okay. So I don't want to do the next example also. I've done you one. Uh, this is how it works. Okay. So we will see a, a small MATLAB code for implementing these things just to get uh, familiar with everything. So this is the hard decision decoder and like I said clearly this is not going to be easy when k becomes large and becomes large okay but nevertheless something to implement. Okay the next is maximum likelihood decoder the soft decision decoder that we spoke about okay so this is the soft decision decoder. So even here the principle is same as what we did in the repetition case okay instead of making hard decisions and finding distances in the Hamming domain using Hamming distance metric we directly find distances with symbol vectors. Okay? So you have 16 different code words, you do BPSK mapping on each of the code words, you get 16 different symbol vectors. Okay? I have not written down all the 16 different symbol vectors here, but you have 16 different uh, symbol vectors. Okay? And then you find the Euclidean distance or actual vector distance between the received vector which is real and the symbol vector. And then you find the one that is closest in the Euclidean distance sense. Okay? So I am not describing this uh, in more detail here. We will write a MATLAB code for this. You will see how I write it. Okay? So complexity is clearly more than the hard decision decoder. You have 2 power k calculations, but each calculation is real numbers and all that. It is a little bit more than that. Okay? Uh, so it turns out we saw before in the repetition code itself. Here is a simple example that is illustrated here uh, to show you how the soft decision decoder can make a different decision from the hard decision decoder. Okay? So I am not going to go into the details of this example. Please look at it when you have time. Uh, the, so, so the soft decision decoder can make different decisions from the hard decision decoder. Okay? So here is a simple example for the repetition code. So the soft decision decoder can be uh, strictly better. Okay? So what have I described for the Hamming code? I have described the code itself just as a lookup table. Uh, I showed you how the mapping works and all that. and then. We discussed the hard decision decoder and we discussed a soft decision decoder. So here are some examples to see how uh, soft decision decoding is going to work for your uh, Hamming code. Remember, uh, you, you might have a vector, received vector like this 1.1, 1.3, 1.8, 1.5, so on. So what will be your C cap? Okay? So it is hard for me to do this calculation. I have to take this received value and go through every single code word. right? and then find the distance etc. There are possibilities to cleverly minimize that work. Okay? I am not going to go into great details, but it is it's a lot of work to do. Right? So you have to go 16 different code words, calculate the distances, the Euclidean distances from each of these things and then find the one that is least and put out as a code word. Okay? So definitely more complex okay? and uh, as k becomes uh, the more complex than hard decision, it is not going to be easy for me to do this for you and as k becomes larger and larger more or less impossible to implement. Okay? Hopefully you understand uh, why this is so. Okay. So if you manage to implement the hard decision and the uh, ML decoder, here is how the picture will look. Remember this is uncoded, this guy is hard decision, this guy is soft decision. Oops. This guy is soft decision. Okay? And you can see the gains already. Okay? So remember, this is still a plot over EB over N0. And what is EB over N0? EB over N0, remember the rate is 4 by 7. So it is 1 by 2 into 4 by 7 or 7 by uh, 4 sigma squared. Okay? So it is 7 by 8 sigma squared. Okay? So EB over N0 is that for the coded case. Uncoded case will be? 1 by 2 sigma squared. Okay? So the EB over N0 is different in the two cases. Uh, but nevertheless, in spite of penalizing for the rate in EB over N0, the soft decision decoder, for instance, okay, gives you a coding gain. Look at this. This is the coding gain of the Hamming code. Isn't that nice? So simple enough code, constructed well. I didn't tell you how the construction came from. Uh, that is a bit of a clever uh, construction, but if you do that and if you manage to implement the soft decision decoder, the maximum likelihood decoder, you get coding gains. It is not much, it is about a dB or so, but still 
uh, it is good coding gain and the, com the complexity was uh, quite small. Okay. So, uh, what we are going to do next is uh, we will uh, we will do MATLAB simulations for uh, the Hamming code as well. Uh, but before that, I just want to summarize real quick what we saw. So, error control codes do provide significant coding gains in practice. So, we did not see any code already that gives that kind of gains, but you can see the Hamming code which is a very small case, very small n is already showing a lot of promise about a db of coding gain uh, you are able to obtain. Okay? And it turns out longer codes have better coding gains. Okay? So, typically you want to have codes which are at least like 100, 200 in length so that you can have coding gains, but we need to find good codes. It is not easy to uh, work with obvious repetition sort of strategies. You have to design the code smartly and modern codes like LDPC and Polar codes we will study are quite sophisticated uh, in the way they are constructed. Not only that, we saw that good decoders are important. So, let us go back here. If you do a hard decision decoder, uh, you do not see coding gain uh, at all, right? So, there is still a loss for uh, for up to some point. After that, it crosses over mildly, but soft decision decoders are good, okay? Particularly soft decision decoders are very, very important and you have to design them well. Uh, but the problem is implementation, right? So, if you, you can have a good decoder, maximum likelihood decoding is optimal, but implementing it is uh, very difficult. So, you want to have good decoders as well, okay? So, this is a summary. Uh, the next thing we will see is uh, MATLAB implementation for uh, 7.4 Hamming code. I will do that uh, in the next lecture. Thank you.